I'm stalling. I'm going to go into my office and I need to start getting it organized. I've gotten the rest of the house pretty much where I want it, other than pictures that I need to hang. And the pictures that I need to hang are in the office, which means I have to go into the office. Here we go. Let's see if I can even get the door open. I have to make some adjustments. See, look. This is the one room. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put my hand in. Let's see? Okay. And then we come out. Stuff's blocking the door. Okay, let me, let me see about getting in there and figuring out a plan of attack and how I can set up a camera so you can see me work on it. All right, I made the door open. I made it open. So these are my pictures over here that I have. I need to get these out. I just bought this one yesterday at a garage sale. Look at me stalling, y'all. I love pictures that have like dark shadows that really pull you in to figure out what the story is. I, I'm just drawn to the, the shadows of these pictures and stories and like the full moon over here. And there's a waterfall. I feel like that's me sitting over there. It kind of looks like a dude. And I'm not going to wear that hat. <laughs> but, like, I love this. I love this picture so much. I'll see if my phone stays. Nope, there you go. There you go. There's lighting. This is taking longer than I thought. Maybe I was a little too optimistic. You ready to get out? You think you're gonna get way more done than you actually are able to? I did find these sweet earrings in here and slapped them in my ears. They make too much noise, listen. I don't know if you can hear that. But the, yeah. So these are coming off. Anyway, well, I'll take them off in a second. I got, well, I mean, We'll see how much. I got some stuff out of here, as you can see. Uh, mostly pictures that I have, I had stuck in here to hang up around the house. What else? That was most of it. And then like, I got my son a punching bag for his birthday. Cause that was like right after we moved here, his birthday. And we just hadn't had a chance to get space in the basement to put it together. So I moved that downstairs and a couple other boxes. And I'm sitting here going through boxes. And now some of my stuff, I don't know how, because I got pods, but some of my boxes got water damaged. And of course it was like my clothes and linens and things. So they stank to high heaven when they got to me. But that's if I could wash. But now I'm opening this box with my books, which is always a treat And my books are water damaged as well and moldy and grody so i opened that box and was like ah oh, give up i don't give up but i'm like seriously and now i'm about to ascertain because also in here I was like this was my grandmother's thing with recipes and so some of them are like just clippings from the newspaper but some of them, God, it stinks. You know that moldy. These are those plastic things. I bet I can wipe those down. Maybe. They're kind of gross, though. You know, these, like, informational, you know. It's always fun. But they stink. Anyway, so now I've got to go look through. I think that's Elaine's. That might be yours. I don't know if you want it back. <coughs> Yeah, so now I need to go through most of the recipes that were close. That's the bread recipe book. Oh, dang it. Oh, it stinks to high heaven. Um, junk. Yeah, they're awful. They stink awful. So, and this is our, we read this every freaking, this is our night before Christmas book that I read to the kids every Christmas Eve. I wonder if I can air it out. 
I liked it because it was the Coca-Cola Santa one. And that's the one we always read. Oh, let's have it. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to see if I can air some of these out. My friend Amy gave me this. Let that shit go. Oh, my Miyazaki book. Please don't be gross. Oh, I got water damaged. Funky monkey. Oh, it's still... Maybe I can flatten it. But it's like the... My Neighbor Hayo, and it's a Miyazaki art book. Art inspired by the films of Miyazaki. And it's like so cool. I wonder if I can, this one I'm gonna try to save. If I can, what oh, the pages are. It doesn't stink though. How come the others stink and this one still smells like a new book? But it's all wavy. Maybe because Miyazaki knows. If you have not had the pleasure, what's your favorite? Miyazaki movie. Oh gosh, the sprites. <laughs> I feel like it's story time, like I'm back teaching kindergarten again. Oh, look at Kiki, right? So it's art inspired by the movies. I love Ponyo, that's one of my favorites, Ponyo. And Kiki's good, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what my favorite is, honestly. It depends on the mood, right? Because the mood of them are so different. Okay. And then my books, my other... I love John Luth. Stillwater. It's in shorts. Those are good. Anyway. <laughs> no, my autograph isn't my autograph. My autograph, Neil Gaiman. Sleeper in the spindle. Chunk in the trunk. That one doesn't look too bad. It's kind of odd in the Frost Giants. That's another, it's a good book. Love my Neil Gaiman. Mm. I have all the stickies because we did a big like Viking homeschool unit. Like I created like a homeschool unit for my kids. And we did, it was all like Viking and Norse mythology and stuff. All right, is this fun or what? Let's watch Margaret go through old books that are moldy maybe. This one, where did I get this one? The Secret River. I'm trying to remember. I think I got it because I just like the cover. I don't even know that I read this one. I should read it because it made it this far with me. The Secret River. I want a Secret River. All right. Oh, that's my cookbook for young scientists. Okay. I love doing like science lessons where we're like cooking or making things. All right. I'm going to go through and see if these, some of these are salvageable. And this one, I have to. This was like one of the Christmas presents my grandmother gave me. Poetry. This is Longfellow, obviously, because you can read too. Longfellow, and she gave me this. In 2004, a gift from my grandmother. All right, I have sorted those out and found some worth saving. I made these back when I was teaching fourth grade, before Harry Potter movies came out. And I was reading Harry Potter to my students, but there was no people like, and there's so many characters that what I would do was anytime a new character was introduced in the book, I, I had like a, these doors next to my reading area and I would like put a pic, the picture of the character next, you know, to hang it up with their name. Cause there were so many characters, you know, when you're reading, it's kind of like Game of Thrones. So many characters at, you're like, wait, who is that again? So like I, I went through, this was back in the day, man, when I was a poor young teacher I remember sitting in the laundromat, doing my laundry after work or on the weekends and like reading through the book and like finding descriptions of the characters to create their um, pictures, right? <laughs> that was McGonagall. And I put that because to help the kids remember she turns into a cat. Isn't this fun? There's Mr. Dursley. Yeah, I just tried to go off of, like, the description that the book had of the characters. <laughs> That's fluffy. Isn't that fun? You probably don't even care. Ah, I'm going to show you anyway. 
That was Malfoy and Crab and Goyle. And here's Snape. And there's Neville. Remember, he's got his toad. And there's Dumbledore. And there's Madame Pomfrey. And there's Filch. Because remember he said he had those lamp-like eyes and his cat had the same kind of lamp-like eyes. And there was Harry. Yeah, this is before the movie. And there's Hermione. I think this is Bane. Because there were a couple of different... I think that was Bane. And then that is... Um... What's her name? Oh my gosh. From the greenhouses Fred and George in the book in the book they were not that tall they were shorter there's Dudley and there's Percy he's got his prefect badge on and there's the portrait Paulswold and there's Mrs. Dursley and that's Flitwick <laughs> and that's fun there's the fat friar who's that there's nearly headless Nick and that's the bloody baron because he had like silvery blood on him on his cloak silvery blood and that's peeves who did not make it into the movies unfortunately peeves the poltergeist he says ickle firsties yep he didn't make the cut what else do i got in here i went i also had like look i have all this stuff like i had them separated by houses so whenever the characters would come in if they were in a different house, I would put them under that house to help the kids remember. Isn't that fun? That's all I got. Oh, that's Madam Hooch. And that's, I think that's Oliver Wood. Yeah, that's Oliver Wood. And there's Ron with the his rat right there. Is that everybody? I have all the name cards. I made all the little name cards and everything to go with. Professor McGonagall. Anyway, peeves, just for funsies. Wasn't that fun? I've kept them all these years. Yeah, Professor Quirrell, to help them remember like he was so shaky. <laughs> well, that was fun. I don't know why I kept them. Maybe because I just had so much fun creating them for my class. And I used them for a couple years. I used them a couple years. I don't know, what's that? And I kept them all this time. I haven't taught in a long time. Nor have I taught Harry Potter in a long time. Back when I was still Ms. Burke. That's all. <laughs> Before my first marriage. We're talking like 2001 or something. Okay. Anyway. Well, that was a, a shift. We're just talking today, I guess. I did my um, podcast, my second podcast with my sister earlier. Mine, ours, our second podcast. And so that was fun. Uh, my my dream for this room, because this is where I'm going to do my recording stuff when I get it all set up, is I want to be able to have like a space where I don't have to shift everything around all the time. These earrings. Uh, because in my old office, I had all my inventory in there as well. And then so I, whenever I was creating, like having to make a video, I would take everything off the table um, from say I was photographing inventory and then make the video because I had to clear this space. And then I was like, okay, well now I need to do my shipping. So I had to clear the space again and like, okay, get all my shipping. So in that room, like had all my shipping stuff, inventory, we got the storage unit, but then I still have my unlisted inventory in there which was kind of a pill as well. So now I want this space to be just kind of like, cause I can't focus in a really messy area. It's my ADHD, I guess, I don't know. And I just can't, like even when I taught, I would either have to stay late or I would come in, like sometimes I would come in with the janitors at 6.30 in the morning, cause I had to have everything kind of like done and cleared and there were no piles of stuff that were waiting to get handled because if there was anything like in my periphery I couldn't focus on what I needed to be doing because then I'm like oh I need to do that oh I need to do that 
and it was just like, I wanted to be there with the kids. So it's kind of like that now here when I'm working and it's kind of, not kind of, it's, I don't like it or at home. I'm very easily, I'm trying to uh, make that a little bit better now that we've moved here is to keep spaces clear and clean and organized because I was like, this is the perfect opportunity where I'm packing and I have the ability to just create the space exactly how I want it. So I've done that in the pantry and there's like a utility closet where I got everything labeled and organized and I mean, down to like, we had all these wires and they were just shoved all over the place. And I was listening to a podcast, I think it was on Mel Robbins podcast, maybe, but maybe have been different. Um, but they were talking about organizing. It was because she was saying, when you hold this item, I think it was about minimizing or whatever. If you're holding this thing or you're looking for a specific thing or like, if I were going to look for this, where would I look? And that's where you go put it. And so it just got to where before I had cords over here, cords over there, you know, battery. Well, we kept the batteries. We had batteries in two places. So it was just like, so now I'm trying to get the kids to, to think of that too, you know. So now scissors are always going missing. So I, I, you know, told them like, okay, if we're looking for scissors, where are we going to look? And so we found a place. And it's amazing how many scissors we have now in the scissor drawer. Yes, we have a scissor drawer. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's been really refreshing, enlightening, and also gives me the opportunity to think, okay, this is gonna make it really easy to downsize again. Yeah, I have been downsizing along the way, but I thought, you know what? Let me just put things in their place and then see, okay, I don't need 25 pairs of scissors. Maybe I don't need a whole scissor drawer because I have a scissor drawer and I have a sticky drawer. Sticky drawer means tape, not work tape, not eBay tape, but like scotch tape, painters, blue painters tape, you know, uh, and then like super glue or any kind of little glues we've got. Because it's one of those things too. It's like, I don't know where it is. I just go buy another one, right? And so you end up with a bazillion of them and they're just scattered all over the place. So that's that. Um, same thing with I haven't even started on the garage yet but I want the same I want the same system like if I'm looking for a screwdriver and this is where I'm looking and it's gonna be there because that's where it goes and there's nowhere else that it would go because otherwise when it's done where are you gonna put it there's no other home for it and that's the home for it okay <laughs> so that's done I have these bought these books over here I'm gonna put them on this shelf that I have in here for now let me show you my shelf right here. I don't know that it's going to stay there. And those are actually, those are I'm pointing like you can see the, let me point so you actually can see these two things on top. They are the things that go on the tables. You can see that table there, um, there. They were, I had one in my work room. Did I have them both in my work room back home? Ooh, falling again. But they go on top of that. Mm, I don't know if I'm gonna keep them like that or not. I might, the kids have, cause I had three of those tables. And one of them is downstairs in Mike's like school area. So I might give him one of those drawers to put on top of his. But then again, he's using his like as an art space. And that might like hinder his art area. Cause he's like painting figures, you know, those little role playing game figures. Oh, what do we have in here? Is it Christmas? Here we go. I know that little box over there is another box of books. Okay. Oh, you're coming down. Right on top of me. This is the way. And this tote is super heavy, so you get to move. I feel like it's Christmas, but presents I don't want to open. Uh, here we go. It says office miscellaneous. So it could be anything. It could be a lot of junk. Or, I don't know. Because I haven't found a lot of my packing stuff. 
So I'm wondering if some of that is packing stuff. This is a pillow office. What? Pillow. Okay. There's some shoes. Nice. They're my son's Crocs. I wonder if they still fit him. That will be interesting to find out. I'm sorry. I can keep falling off and I'm trying to make it where you don't. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Wow. Why is this office? Just random is what I should have put. Random stuff. Towels. I guess I gave up. Velcro. My H-E-B shoes. These are the um, the hundredth anniversary Disney mini figs. There's Oswald. See Oswald. And there's the King. Coco's in there. Pocahontas. This is fun. I've had this forever. Have you played with one of these before? It gets loud, but it's awfully fun to try. Let's see if I can do it. It's like I don't know which. What I don't know. I don't even know what you call this. When I was doing, when I was going to school, when I was becoming a teacher, I had a part-time job at a toy store. It was like one of those like mom and pop type toy stores. It was called Imagination Toys. And they sold this there. It's gonna get loud if I can do it. If I can. I don't know if I can still do it. I don't know if I can do it sitting. Maybe I need to get on my knees. Get on my knees. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Oh, I got one go one that's not going. Can I get it going? I don't know if I can get it going. Uh, no, I can't. You get the picture. And then you just play with that. Ta-da! It makes too much noise though. Oh, Groucho, I see you. Hi, Groucho. There you are. Your glasses are coming off, Groucho. Why do they stick in? This is my Groucho. My grandmother collected dolls and Groucho was in, yeah, Groucho was in her collection. But I have taken Groucho, oh, your cigar fell. And I put little pins and things I find on him. What is that? World's greatest nut. Someone sent that to me. <laughs> that came in fan mail, I think. And then there's this cool enamel pin, my Mockingjay, Magic, my TARDIS. Oh, my little wind chimes. Oh, I think I'm going to take the wind chimes off Groucho and we're going to put those somewhere else. It's like a wind chimes necklace. Come here. If I can get them off. There we go. Wind chimes. I don't think I could wear the wind chimes because that would drive me nuts, but I can enjoy them in other places. I can't get this camera right, you guys. But let's give Groucho his cigar. Why is it not wanting to stay in your hand? There you go. And then Groucho's gonna find a place in the room somewhere. Glad to have you back, Groucho. Then, <laughs> Here's my Tenacious D post-apocalypto book, not intended for children at all. I love the D. Tenacious D, that is. Uh, what else do we have in here? Is this fun or is this like, Margaret, what are you doing? I don't even know, y'all. I don't even know. I just wanted to come talk to you. Here's a picture of me and my grandmother. I had given this to her and she had this at her house. Grandmother. And so I kept it. Yep. And yeah, this is just like, you know, in my workroom, I would have all my little, all my little fun doodads that I like find. I would find at different little thrift stores. Chomp, chomp. <laughs> I made a little video to make my kids laugh with this, uh, with a Joan Jett song. The, I love rock and roll. Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. <laughs> Ow! They thought that was funny. Obviously, it's not what I can share online because of the copyright issues, but 
the fun things we have and do. Do you ever just like cute little fun things? What have we got here? My tiger. My tiger. Oh, this is fun. I feel like it's Christmas. Okay. Oh, you're falling again. Don't fall. Okay. This might be a long video where you're just like listening to me. Or not. Or not. Oh, some little notes I kept. I love you, Mommy. You, me. That's sweet. Okay. Then I got Jane. Jane from Firefly. That's Vera, his gun. That's his very favorite gun. He tries to trade it for a lady. And that's a little emerald that my friend AJ gave me for my birthday. I had it in a... And there's my pop figure. Nacho! And this is another... My grandmother loved to collect stuff of the queen. Stuff of the queen, like memorabilia. So she had quite a bit of like royal memorabilia. But she really... She and the queen were born the same year. So she kind of had a, an affinity for the queen. So I had to keep a couple of things... And then this is something that was my grandmother's as well that she even wrote on the bottom of it with a pencil about 1955 given to Doris for Christmas by Aunt Alice and I can't read it's getting dark in here but yeah that was something that was my grandmother's that she kept for a long time so so there. Oh, there's Lumpy Space Princess, LSP. She's from Adventure Time. <laughs> I love her. I'm a glob, you guys. Drop my bomb. Oh, I dropped you, LSP. Sometimes I have LSP vibes. And then my Deadpools. My Deadpools. I love Deadpool. And then this is just a cool little box I got into a, I don't know where I got it. Probably a garage sale or an unboxing. It's really pretty. And what have we here? Oh, that's a camera box. Oh, here's another Adventure Time friend. That is Lady Rainicorn. Lady Rainicorn's awesome. She always gives good advice. And then this is a doll that I bought my grandmother for Christmas one year. She liked Madame Alexander dolls. And I got her the dinosaur one. Isn't it cute? She kind of looks like a gator. Anyway, so I got that for my grandmother one year. So that was one of the things I wanted. And here's her other. This was one of the last trips or like outings I went on with my grandmother. There's a British Isle store in Houston. And this was for the Jubilee, right? The Diamond Jubilee. Yeah. And so she wanted to go get something for the Diamond Jubilee. And so I went with her over there. And this was the, the mug she picked, which surprised me because they had a pink one and my grandmother loved pink. And so I was like, why aren't you getting the pink one? She's like, because it's like more regal with the blue. I'm like, okay, <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. And then these music boxes, I love them. I have so many. Oh, this is, um. oh y'all, I'm gonna cry. Um, this one is You Are My Sunshine. So I put it with all my stuff that's my grandmother's. I had, I want to say the honor when she was, um, you know, we, we as a family were lucky that her decline was slowish, but fast. Um, so we kind of knew the end was coming and she got to be at home and we got to all be there, which is what she wanted. She wanted to be at home. And, you know, it was hard. I know Anne Eckhart has just gone through this with her dad. And she shared some of the journey of being there with a loved one, emotionally and physically, to experience that. And it's, you have to love the person. It, it's, it was a challenging time, but I was so grateful to be there. And like I lay in bed with her and she was sort of, she would come in and out of consciousness. 
um, and lucidity. And then she would be just sort of like spacing, like looking out into space and not like knowing or responding or anything. And I would sing to her, and this is one of the songs I would sing to her. My only sunshine, you make me happy. Anyway, that's one of the songs I would sing for my grandmother um, at that time. So that always kind of gives me a little tears. <laughs> Because, because, anyway, um, so I got this as well. Looks like, you know, a little cast iron fridge. It says Alaska on it. I don't, I think I got it at a garage sale. I don't know exactly what it is or, or why it is, but I got it and I like it. Um, another story about my grandmother, you know, during her, during that time, my grandmother loved Christmas. And she actually passed away Christmas morning. Um, but in the interim, like the days before where she was kind of in and out, she was so excited because she had gotten the kids this. It was like one of those Discovery kids, like spaceship things that's made of cardboard. It was like white space shuttle, you know, that they could play in. And she was so excited to give it to them when she got it. And then um, I think it was the day before, it must've been Christmas Eve, where she kind of came to and was saying, you know, she was apologizing that she missed Christmas. And I said, no, 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 you didn't miss Christmas yet, grandmother, Christmas is tomorrow. Or, you know, and um, I said, do you want to, do you want to wait or do you want to give the kids their present now? And she said, I better do it now. Um, and so the kids came into the room at the foot of the bed and opened it up so she could see that. She could see them open it. So, well, I'm all, um, it was very precious, a very special moment uh, that we got to have with her and that she got to have because she just loved it. So. I mean, you would, you might think that that would make Christmas like really sad, a, a sad time, but I don't because she loved Christmas so much and she loved having everybody at the house and she loved everybody. Um, gosh, who knew? <laughs> who knew this is where I was going, y'all? Um, and I guess also like, well, yes, unboxing all this stuff is bringing up these memories but you know um I appreciate Anne you know sharing all the going you know all the stuff with her dad because he's been such a big part of the journey that she shared and um it really brought back those memories of getting to to be there for my grandmother in her final days and try to make sure that it's it was the way she wanted it you know I was very um close to her so yeah so it was a very special time yeah <laughs> and what have we here these are more record albums that I need to send downstairs because my son has the um, record player. He loves music. So these are a bunch of records. They didn't get water damage too, did they? I think some of them just old, maybe, hopefully. And I don't know if he wants all these. Some of them like, yes, <laughs> but he loves Queen, so. Uh, anybody else in here? I think I'm gonna have to call it. Because of one, I'm gonna just cry cry all over y'all's faces. And two, now that I've pulled all this stuff out of the box, I'm like, well, where am I gonna put it? I need to get a nice like shelf in here once I figure out the vibe of this room. But we got to have a nice little chit chat, didn't we? What are these 45s? And it's getting dark. There's Gloria Gaynor. Is it I Will Survive? It says Honeybee. Never say goodbye, but we have to say goodbye because the light's going. 
but you can play that in your head, okay? <gasps> Big Rock Candy Mountain. Oh, yes. What's this one? Monkey Shines and talk to the animals, but come on. On the Big Rock Candy Mountain, right? That's a good song. <laughs> and Oh Brother Where Art, that was actually where I was introduced to that song. If you haven't seen that movie, it's fantastic. Oh Brother Where Art Thou. We're in a tight spot. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm gonna go. And wow, you got more than you bargained for, and so did I. <sighs> Signing off, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good evening. Bye.